I saw a picture of the Holy Family that showed Joseph doing carpentry while Jesus held a tool and Mary watched at the door doing nothing. Not like any family I know. We know what real families are like. In a real family, Jesus would have been getting in his father's way or been off somewhere else when Joseph wanted help. Mary would have been working at keeping the house livable and the family fed. If that picture of Joseph's workshop is of a holy family, we're all out of luck. All we can do is look on wistfully and think how nice it would be if our families were perfect. If family holiness is some impossible situation of goodness, harmony, cleanliness, comeliness, and industry, there's no reason for us to celebrate this day. Perhaps the picture was wrong. Maybe Jesus was a pest around the house. Maybe Mary shouted herself hoarse, calling him to meals. Maybe Joseph got so caught up in his work that Mary and Jesus stood at the workshop door, ignored. Maybe Mary sometimes burned the bread. We've just celebrated the birth of Jesus. The mystery of the Incarnation is that Jesus was not God's play acting at being human. That's a heresy called docetism. Jesus really was human. He really needed to be toilet trained. He really got bumps and bruises rough housing with friends. He really could be a pest. He really could be a precious son. The family we call the Holy Family was not all that much different from other families. Are we wrong then to call it a Holy Family if it was no more holy than our own? Because of the Incarnation, holiness cannot be otherworldliness. The place where God is met, the place where God loves us, is here, now. A truly holy man or woman lives in the here and now is a sign here and now that God's love is real and at work. The word holy comes from the word healthy. Holiness is a kind of health, and health may be the means for us to understand holiness and, therefore, what we celebrate on this feast of the Holy Family. When I'm healthy, I'm able to move through life with a certain confidence I feel that nothing the world brings me by way of challenge can overwhelm me. Holiness, too, is a kind of confidence, a conviction that God's love embraces me. God's love is stronger than sin, stronger than death, and so I can live with confidence. I need not fear to love others or be loved by them. I need not fear the world and what it may do to those who serve. I need not fear the power of sin or death. Think of people who make health an object of life. Besides being burdensome to the rest of us, they're neither happy nor truly healthy. That is because health is a byproduct of a certain kind of life. One who walks, runs, dances, or climbs for the joy of it is healthy. One who walks, runs, dances, or climbs for the sake of health is unhealthy. Holiness, too, is a result, not an objective. When I'm filled with amazement at God's great love, when I share that love with all I meet, I become holy. I pray with joy, with gusto. If I turn prayer into some sort of spiritual calisthenics, I will be neither happy nor holy. I will not be a sign of heaven to the world. That brings us back to the Holy Family. It was holy not because it lived an exalted life unavailable to the rest of us. It was holy because it was a group of people, not unlike ourselves, who loved, who lived, who wept, who laughed. Theirs was a home in which a boy could grow in size and strength filled with wisdom with the grace of God on him. Our homes can be the same. Perhaps more than we realize, they are. They have their problems. No family is without them. Every mother feels swords pierce our heart at some time or other. Yet our homes are where we learn to love, where we learn of God's love. 
It's in our families that we practice the sharing, openness, and patience that enable us to show the glorious love of God to the world.